Maybe you don't like the way that Odoo set up the profit and loss, or maybe you don't like the way they set up the balance sheet, or maybe you want a brand new financial report. Whatever the case may be, Odoo has a way for you to easily customize and create financial reports. Now, before we get too deep into this, this is only going to apply for version 16 onward. There is a way to customize things in 15 and before, but it's a little bit different than what we're going over today. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. So just like with most things we go over together, you're going to want to be in developer mode. So click the monkey or go into settings and activate the developer mode so you can see this bug here. Now let's go ahead and go into accounting. We're going to go to reporting and go to our profit and loss. So being in developer mode, we can see these little gears right here. We can see this bug. We can see these information icons right here. It starts to open up some real possibilities for us. If we click these gears right here, it's going to bring us into our configuration for this report. We can get to this in different ways, but this is my favorite way to get to it if I'm adjusting an existing report. So let's start with our lines here. So you can see that this is the structure of our profit and loss. You can see that if we come over here, we've got revenue, then we've got less our cost of revenue, then we have our gross profit, then we have less operating expenses, operating income or loss, okay, uh, plus other income, less other expenses, and then net profit. Obviously, if we look at this report here, you can see that some of these are formatted differently, and that's due to the fact that this is on the first level, and something like gross profit is on level zero, giving them different formatting here. So if we want to, we can certainly move things around, like I could move net profit up here. Be careful because it might switch levels on you. So I still want this on level zero. I'm going to go ahead and save. And you can see that that is reflected immediately in my report here. In certain versions of Odoo, it looks this way by default. So if you want your net profit on the bottom, just do the opposite of what I just did. Let's pop into our balance sheet just real quick to show you a little bit more complicated structure. So reporting, balance sheet, then we click the gears right here, and you can see there are a bunch of different levels on our balance sheet. You can structure your profit and loss the same way, or if you want a new report, you can do it the same way by making sure that you have these you know, on the right level. We can move things up, we can move them down, you can move them all over the place. None of that changes our calculations because the calculations are set elsewhere. This is just about formatting. Moving on to our columns, we can set different columns inside of our reports. So you look at this, we've got balance. That's the name of this. You can see that's our measure right here is balance. It's going to be tied to a specific expression, which is balance right here. We'll get into that a little bit more in a second. But you can have multiple columns if you want on this report. Coming over to options, I would not change the load more limit. I would not change the prefix groups threshold. I'd leave those at default. Count groups, um, I'd leave this as optional as well. Multi-company, I would leave use company selector. You don't have to worry about somebody seeing something that they shouldn't. Access rights still apply here. The default opening is all about where it opens to, what date range it opens to when we first open our profit and loss. So if you want it to be this year, Leave it at this year, or you have all these other fun little options. Horizontal groups are pretty interesting, and I think it's something that a lot of companies would spend time on if they understood how they worked. And they're pretty simple to use. So we're going to go ahead and spend a second on these so that you know how to use them. So to better understand horizontal groups, duplicate your tab and go out to the main page, and we're going to search horizontal groups here. I've got a couple that I've been playing around with, but we're going to create a new one here. Let's go ahead and call this partner. I've already created this one, but we're going to call it partner two. And then we're going to add a line right here. So we can select from any field that is on our journal items level. So I can come in and I can group by journal entry by journal. I wouldn't do it by distribution analytic account. It's probably not going to do what you want it to do. Um, I could do a ledger company. Anyway, I don't need to read all of these, but you can group by any one of these. We're going to start with our partner just because it's the easiest to follow. So all we need to do is go ahead and save and close this. This is going to group it by partner. We could certainly set up a domain and say, I only want to see these partners here based on this criteria, but we're not going to limit it on that level just yet. Make sure you save it properly. And then let's come back to our profit and loss here and add partner two as a horizontal group and save. Now, when we come back to our profit and loss, we can go to our horizontal group here and we can select partner two. What that's going to do when I select it is, going, is that it's going to break up our profit and loss 
by partner so that we can see, okay, where did our sales come from? Okay, uh, where did our expenses come from? This may not be very efficient for you and your team to group it by partner like this, but you could whittle it down and you could get some pretty good information out of this if you wanted to. So I definitely play around with horizontal groups if you like to slice and dice data. It's a great way to do it. We have a bunch of other options down here that you can play with. Um, they're pretty straightforward. Essentially, this is making it so that I can lock down the date range or lock down whether they can unfold all in a profit and loss, um, whether they can do a growth comparison, period comparison, uh, whether they can do cash basis or not, and then really whether we want them to limit account types, journals, partners, draft entries, unreconciled entries, um, allowing favorite filters, which can be super fun and useful, and then whether or not we want them to be able to hide lines that are zero or if we want to just show everything every time. These favorite filters can also be pretty fun. So if I turn on favorite filters, go ahead and save. Now when I come into profit and loss, if somebody creates a favorite filter, inside of our journal items, I can grab it here to limit down the information that I see. Let's look at that in practice. So if I come into my journal items, again, that's going to be accounting journal items. I could come in here and say, okay, let's just take one of these filters right here, save it, call it sales, and go ahead and save. Now I have this favorite filter that I can use here. Coming back into my profit and loss, you can see now I have this cool little button with a lovely star right here where I can select any of these filters that I've set up as favorites for myself. Those filters will then apply to the report, which this one's kind of garbage <laughs> for our profit and loss. We're not going to use that, but if you guys created one of these, you could then apply it to your report. Okay, so that's most of the stuff about formatting. There's probably some more advanced stuff that we could go into, but we're not going to right now. We're going to talk about our formulas and how we get these calculations to work. So inside each one of these sections, there is a calculation, generally speaking. If we click into that, we can see that calculation. So for each one of these lines, we can have multiple computations. Okay, This is the label of our computation here. We then choose a computation engine, which this one is aggregate other formulas, which allows us to add up other codes within this report to give us a roll up. We can then also set up options within this. I would keep your date scope to the strictly on the given dates unless you're doing something interesting there. Uh, figure type, you can change the format of the figure. Uh, carry over to, I would avoid that for right now until we talk about it more. If you guys want to talk about that, that more, stick it in the comments below. Blank of zero, just leave this unchecked most times unless you want to hide it. And growth is good or bad. It's more about formatting, but you can mess with that if you want to. But the big stuff here is our computation engine and then our formula. So with aggregate other formulas, again, we're just pulling this from other places and it's a standard formula where we say, okay, here's the code. Okay, there's our code for this one. Here's our code and then the label of the computation that we want to pull for this aggregation. So we have aggregate other formulas, which is one of our very popular options. The other really popular one is Odoo Domain. So if we go into Revenue, we can see that now there's this group by that's basically saying, okay, for balance or any other calculations inside of here, we want to group by our account ID inside of this domain with this formula and the sub formula of negative sum. Now let's stop and take a quick breath here. This is a lot. We're going over a lot of information here and you're going to want to play with this to get comfortable with it. But the cool thing about everything I'm sharing here is that it'll allow you to group by whatever you want on a journal item level for your reports. So say you want to group by the partner again, or say that you want a new group for your chart of accounts. So you don't like grouping by the account type. You can group by something different if you want to. So let's go ahead and follow this through because it'll be really valuable to you. So as I said, we're grouping by account ID here, but we're also limiting down what we're going to see in this section. So we're saying the account type needs to equal income, and then we're going to break this out by account ID. We're also going to take the amount that we're getting from each of these line items that matches this account ID, and that is in that group by account ID, and we're going to take a negative sum of this because if you're into accounting, you know that credits are positive on the PL 
and debits are negative. So we have to reverse this here. It's really nothing too crazy, but it can be a bit daunting the first time you come up against it. The big thing here is we want to make sure the label is consistent so it flows up nicely. And we want to make sure that we've got our group by and our formula, which is more of a domain, set up properly. So just for illustration purposes, I've changed the formula and said account type does not equal false, which means that we do have an account type set, which is going to be everything. I'm going to go ahead and save this, save it, and then we're going to come over to our profit and loss and see what that did. So now you can see in revenue, I've got basically all my journal items represented, and they're grouped by account right here. It's also negative sum, meaning that debits are negative and credits are positive. Everything that we'd expect to have happened. Popping back over, there are some other computation engines. The main ones that we use are Odoo Domain and Aggregate Other Formulas. I'd like to figure out a bit more about external value and custom Python function, but I've not used them before, so I'm not going to dive into that and try and you know lead you blindly through this. But if anybody wants me to dive into that more, drop it in the comments below and I'll consider it. Now that we've talked about computation a bit more, I just want to tie this all up real quick. So this expression label right here, balance ties directly to what we have here. So if you want to add additional computations, you need to make sure that the label that you've got represented here ties to the expression label that's right here. This name is really just about formatting and making sure we have a good heading. The big thing here is making sure that your expression label is the right one. The last thing I want to go over is what if you want to be able to add something different? Well, so we can go to configuration and go to accounting reports. This is the home for every single accounting report inside of Odoo. So if I want to do something new, I can do something new, or I can take a profit and loss or some other existing report, and I can just go ahead and duplicate it and start from there, which is normally what I would do. So that was a lot, but I believe it's super helpful information, especially for somebody that wants to change their profit and loss or their balance sheet because it doesn't quite fit what they need. As always, if you have more questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below or grab some time with me on my Calendly. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon.